All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in and staying through this long. This is part three of installing the tank Speedway motor fuel tank. So in this video, all we're gonna be doing is installing the tank and showing you how to route everything. Part four, we're actually gonna be routing the hoses and showing you all of that. So thank you for watching. Let's, uh, let's get to it. So here we have our tanks kit still on the paper. And then over here we have our old rusted fuel tank. It doesn't look rusty from the outside, but the inside has rust on top of the rust. So much rust. Starting out fresh is going to be great. So let's go ahead and get this installed. With this new tank, you're not going to be using any of your old fuel lines. You're going to need all new fuel lines because the old system has the cinder going on the bottom of the tank. The new tank has it on top. So you're also going to need to drill two holes into your trunk to route those lines through. Let me show you. All right, I got the new tank set in. No screws, no nothing, just set in. When you set this in, you're going to want to make sure you don't crush this wire. So either tape it out of the way or just slide it in and push it out of the way. But this thing literally fits like a glove and the original holes line up perfectly. Every original hole lined up. The ones that it looks like it's not lined up is because there's butyl tape underneath. But it is lined up, I promise. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to y'all. Um, you see brand new coated fuel tank we got our welds in there it's looking good no rust no nothing everything looks solid our support or our baffle i don't know maybe that's i don't know what that is i'm assuming it's support but it's only welded on one end not the other so i wonder if it's just a baffle Help with the slushing, I don't know. I'm actually gonna pick it back up and see if there's anything. So there's nothing here. Interesting, I don't know. We'll see. If you have any knowledge on what that part is, please leave a comment in the description because I'm curious, I'm sure others are curious. I'm just gonna say baffle because I don't know any better. But that could be the wrong term and I want to, this whole video is about helping people. So if you want to help, please comment and help someone in the comments. Help me. Thank you. All right. So next on the install kit, you're going to take this little baggie out of the red bag that came in your kit. And you're going to use these bolts optional. Of course, you could use the original hardware. Mine's pretty rusted. So if these fit, I'm hoping they do. Fingers crossed that I'm going to be using these. If not, I'm going to have to go buy new screw hardware because I'm not going back in with those. If not, I mean, you could always get this in a rust killer bath and coat it. I mean, that's always an option too. But don't go back in with rusted parts. The point is you remove something to make it better, make it better. Don't go back in with rusted parts unless you have to for a temporary fix. There are um, temporary rules that let you. But so let me go ahead and see if these screws fit. That is them right now, I know, messy, messy. But, you can see already, all the rust is getting dissolved. All the shining parts is where the rust is being eaten through. And after that, I'm gonna go through with a nice black coating. And you see all the rust is gone, all that's left is the red paint. So this is one of the fixes I was talking about earlier. If you're gonna do it, at least kill the rust and then go through and coat it. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do is coat it with the black paint and then uh, go from there and install it back up. All right, now that the bolts have been rust dissolved, I spray them with brake cleaner to clean off all of that solvent, and then I go through with this high performance enamel matte black. This stuff's the best I've seen as far as the black spray can that's not gonna fade or chip or anything. The silver can's the one to get, not the white can. All right, while well, those bolts are drying, let's go ahead and finish up this install. So you're also gonna take this out of the red bag, and it's gonna line up right there the old tank has this molded into the tank this is removable and you're gonna put one of these gaskets cork gasket underneath here before you screw it down so i could have been wrong these screws could have just been for this 
in the fill tank, which that makes perfect sense now. It doesn't come with screws for that tank. You want to reuse the old ones. Makes sense. I don't read instructions, so that's my fault. As you can see, you got three cork gaskets. One goes here, one goes here, and then one goes here. And this one will have a separate one built into the, the level. All right. So I got the screws mounted in here, the cork gasket installed, and I installed these screws using blue Loctite, and I just tightened it to as tight as I could get with the screwdriver. I then slid over this rubber um, cup, uh, this rubber tube. I taped up all the other holes so none of the screws would fall in. I do have a correction to make. This gasket does not go here. It goes in that one, and this one goes in this one. So if you do need another gasket for this, you have to buy this from like CJ Pony or something. Or reuse it, because this one's not torn or anything. It's just flat. Next up, I'm going to put the screws back in around the side because they're dry now. And then I need to finish the installing the fuel pump and the fuel level sender. All right, just like that, we got brand new black bolts. Looking all good. And there are a few spots it doesn't touch, like these two top front ones. If you wanted to add screws there later, you could, but those are the only two that didn't have holes and I didn't have bolts for them. So I used all the original bolts. I didn't have any extras. I have two extra drill holes. So I could always add two screws later if I want to, but I think it's fine. So next, I think I'm gonna do this fill neck, the filler neck, and then just keep working back. All right, so this actually wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I put this tube in first, slide the fill neck in from the outside in, I want to hear and just keep wiggling it back and forth while holding the implying pressure here. And it should be about that flush, about a quarter inch gap, and then the rest will get tightened with a screw. See? So that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple to install your clamps after you got this tightened. All right. So in the instructions, it says you have to measure the depth of your tank when installing this pump. So I measured. It's seven inches and a quarter deep from this two and one eighths diameter accessory opening. And what you gotta do is on the return line, this white line, you gotta measure, stay still, seven and a quarters from the top part down and then take off an inch and go up. I cut it as slant just in case anything blocks it. And then next, you gotta measure seven and quarters on this big black line minus your pump now you gotta remember this nozzle goes inside here so don't account for this section just part down and then give yourself about a quarter inch after that and see how it fits because your sock's going to add a little bit to it as well so that's what we want it and that's how it looks right here see it says depth minus pump and sock and that's what you want. And then this is, your return is depth minus one inches, and that's minus one inch. And then you got this is one inch gap. So I'm gonna put the pump on now, assemble it, clamp it, put the cover on, and then I'm gonna zip tie it. All right, there you go. You have one installed fuel pump. So as you can see, the fuel pump's gone inside this black tube. You have to work it a little bit, then you have to clamp this down. And then, before you do that, you want to put this rubber or foam sleeve protecting the pump. You want to use the supply zip ties to connect the return line to the pump. You also want to keep this plug in before you even turn this pump into it. You then want to route your line, it doesn't matter which side, up these tubes and then tighten these nuts on top to clamp down the wires to keep fuel from popping out of those wires. Pretty cool design. I haven't seen one like that before. I haven't done many of these though. Next, you want to really push on this sock and push it up. It's hard, but it's hard for a reason. It needs to be on there snug. You don't want that falling off and junk clogging up your fuel pump. So, after that, you drop this down in there. And then, along with your cork, don't forget your cork. And then tighten it down. 
All right, I got the fuel pump installed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Had a real weird voice there for a second. Um, these allergies are kicking my butt. But I got the fuel pump installed, all the mounting screws tightened, along with the cork gasket underneath. It's going to take some finagling to get it to go in. It's tight fit, it's supposed to be. Next, when you tighten these wires, you're going to leave a little bit of slack underneath. You're going to tighten the top note nuts with 9mm wrench. And make sure you do not over tighten. You just want to tighten enough to where these wires no longer move up and down. Next, we're going to move on to the fuel cindle, cinder level lever. Ugh. Can't talk today. So, step one of the fuel cinder installation. It says if your tank is within six inches to 15 and a half inches of depth, which this is, it's seven and a quarter. So, it says if you have anything in between those inches, you're going to remove this bottom bracket, which is this piece right here that lets it go down deeper so you're gonna remove sorry yeah no, no that's right yeah the bottom bracket you're gonna remove so first you gotta take off this nut there's another one right here you gotta take the nut off first though because it's threaded on the inside as well so it's a double lock you gotta tighten it with threads but you also have a nut tightening it and then after you get the nut off you're gonna unscrew the phillips head screw just like these right here so i'm just gonna take the nut off take the washer this is why I have tape there in case any of these decide to make their way over there it won't fall in very important I should probably tape up those ends as well but um backtracking this is your vent this is your return and this is your sin see all labeled V S R can't mess it up it's dummy proof but these are universal kits so that's what the instructions are for like universal cinder universal pump but also designed for this tank it's a little weird but you know, I guess they have variations of their tank probably, and they want to help with that to make sure everything goes, runs smoothly. Easy enough, I don't mind. It's not a hard installation at all. So let me finish taking that off and I'll move on to step two. All right, so this was a pain in the butt, but the instructions are not very good on this one. This is the first one I ran to and the instructions actually set. But it tells you to remove this bracket, yeah. That's easy. It tells you to remove the screws on the back of this housing, save them for later, sure. And then you go down here and step D is where I'm at. So it says reinstall the plastic rheostat housing to the upper mounting bracket and secure the screws you removed in step B. For tank steps six to seven inches, the top screw is not needed. Adjust the float length and pivot point for the tank step. So sounds easy, but it's telling you to base it off of this diagram. Now, I'm assuming this is means half of the tank depth. That's what I would assume, but that's all it says, half tank depth. So I went with that. I went half tank depth, you know, and then it says add an eighth inch. Well, I did that. I got half the tanks. The tank depth was six and five eighths plus an eighth puts me almost at six and a half it's like 6.42 or something like that i'm sorry 3.42 after that and then you gotta unscrew this take this rod out and put this rod in that's easy you just mount that measure that up to an eighth down of that that's easy and the reason you have to go so high with this is because when this is down Look where it's going to be sitting. It's going to be sitting in the tank's depth. So about half of that. And then when it's up, it's up there. So that's why you got to do that. And then you cut off the excess when you're done. Because you don't need all that excess. So that's that. Let me go ahead and install that and show you. All right, so when measuring your float level height, this little bracket that you took off is exactly an eighth of an inch. And just like it says, it needs an eighth of an inch clearance for the gasket. So, you're going to use that bracket, clamp it down, and then you're going to want to pop, 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 one second, I'm doing it one hand. Okay. Then you're going to want to do that before tightening it down. And that is how you get your perfect placement. So, you're going to work it until, sorry, I had it too high, but you want your float all the way up. I had it too high, so it was like halfway full, but yeah. You get the idea, and then you just tighten that flathead screw when you're done. So I gotta put the camera down, 
because I am doing this with one hand and I need both for this. But that is how you get a perfect measurement. Use that bracket, use what you have, and don't guess it. Perfect. All right, there you go. You can see, look, it's all the way up and there's just a hair of a gap. And that's fine with me. I'm fine with a hair gap. And that's that. Now you gotta cut off this excess, cause look at that. <laughs> Easy peasy, I'm just gonna cut it with a pair of um, cut off pliers. All right, if you don't have these pliers from Hover Freight, I suggest it. They cut through this like butter. You can see I didn't use a cut off disc. You can see the bite marks. I'm not trying, I'm not sponsored by them. I'd love to, but <laughs> I'm not. So there we go. Now you got your fuel lever all the way down. Don't mind how wobbly it is. This is just a float. So whenever it feels in there, it'll go up. When it's not, it'll go down. It's supposed to be like that. So simple. You can see I had to cut off that bracket excess, like it says, because you can't have the bracket touching the bottom of the tank and messing things up. So now we'll remove our clamp, drop this down, and be good to go. As you can see, everything here is done. All that is extra hardware that will get thrown away. Don't longer need it. I don't throw hardware away. I keep it for some other project. But that is it. Now for this, you have your send positive and your negative ground. You're gonna have to route that cable that's underneath right now up into it. That's easy, just run an extension and connect it. And then that, see, is done for the video of part three. Part four will show you the routing of the lines and the wiring. So thanks again for checking out the video and have a good day.